One of the first things I would recommend when you get this machine and after you set it up and plug it in for the first time, just go in and I've been professionally 3D printing since 2018. When I say professionally, it means I sell what I make. Ever since then, I'm always looking for ways to help diversify my maker space. At one time I had 22 3D printers, all just printing away. And that's great if that's all we're doing with them. Anyway, I've looked into other ways to make things like a Cricut machine to create vinyl stuff. Hydro dipping, where you've got a big water with film on top and you dip the thing and it comes out with a new design on it. And of course, I've looked into laser engraving, laser etching, laser marking, laser cutting. So when Algo Laser reached out to me to talk about a partnership on one of their diode laser machines, of course I said yes, how could I turn that down? So here we are. They sent me this Algo Laser DIY kit Mark II. And full transparency here, they did send this to me for review. No money was exchanged hands. They know that I make reviews based on my experience and my results. They don't have any say over what I say, think, or do, or talk about in the video. And they're not going to have a chance to review this video before it goes live. So I just want to put that out there and make that known so it doesn't seem like I'm just shilling something because I'm paid to. We're going to dive into this laser a little bit deeper and take a closer look at it in my experiences with it. So let's talk about the setup. It came in a box and it was all in pieces, which reminded me a lot of my very first 3D printer, the Anet A8. That thing I had to put every bolt, every wire, every belt together individually. And it took a really long time, especially for your first 3D printer. Pretty much everything is individual parts. If I were to give this a rating, difficulty of assembly, one being easy and 10 being hard, I'd put it at about a six. And that's with my experience assembling 3D printers and machines like this over time. It's not difficult, but it is kind of a pain in the ass. I actually put this together in a live stream and I'll leave a link to that up here somewhere or maybe down there. Anyway, it was on a live stream and I went ahead and just put this bad boy together. It didn't take that long, maybe upwards of an hour, but I was also interacting in the stream too, so keep that in mind. Once it's put together, it really is surprisingly sturdy. The thing's huge, 400 by 400, I think, uh, millimeters. That is little pads on the bottom of the feet, so it's not gonna really slide around while it's doing its laser thing, jumping back and forth on, on the machine. And on those feet, it does have little screw holes, so if you have it on a workbench or a dedicated workspace, you can screw screw it down so it definitely isn't going to move and it stays put forever and ever until you unscrew it. But so far so good. This was a really good start to this machine. Jumping into working on this machine, I want to put it out there that I think this thing is a great laser cutter. Not so sure about laser marking or engraving or etching so far, and we'll look into why here in a little bit. I purchased these three millimeter thick sheets of wood, plywood or pine I think, I don't remember. Some of the models that come preloaded on this machine, it works great. All the settings are dialed in, it's fine tuned, and you just hit print and it prints out things. Like all kinds of stuff. In fact, this was the first thing I hit print on. I, I keep saying print. Marked on the top of the wood and then cut it out. This was already a predefined model that was in the machine. So it was this. Same kind of thing. It has the markings already on there and it cut it out. And all of this was already defined in the machine. You can kind of see some of the difficulties that I had printing the other one of this out. A little sign that's going to stand and it just sits there. You can see it on some of the B-roll video here. The point is all these were already loaded on the machine. So I wanted to go do my own custom thing on these machines. So you can interact with this bad boy through the touch screen that's on the laser itself. Uh, they also have a mobile app, in which I loaded on a tablet, so I had a bigger screen to play with. And then you can also link to Lightburn directly from a PC that's got it installed. So I tried all three. My preference is going to be Lightburn because you get a lot more control over everything within the application. The mobile app, not very good in my experience. A lot of preloaded models that just didn't translate well to the laser, um, but the touchscreen was really nice. One of the first things I would recommend when you get this machine and after you set it up and plug it in for the first time, just go in and update the firmware. When I first got it, I think it was firmware one dot something. I went in and uh, was kind of going through the menus and it was almost blurry, hard to read, hard to see on that size of screen. When I went in and did a firmware update, a lot of that cleared up. It had a lot more information like how long the model was expected to take, stuff like that. This machine is also Wi-Fi enabled and that's how I was able to do 
the firmware upgrades as well. Light burn is a big learning curve. How fast the laser moves, how much power it gets, you're gonna go through a lot of trial and error, which is fine. For example, I made this little guy, which is just on, you know, a piece of leather patch, but man, I cut way too deep on it. It almost cut all the way through it. You can even see the back it is really deep, a lot deeper than I expected it to be. Hey, that's what she said. I do think this is an excellent entry-level tool and maybe even a step above entry-level or entry-level with some more advanced features with it. They do have different bundles that you can purchase. For example, mine came with a honeycomb platform. So as you're lasering, it's not going to go all the way through to workbench or whatever you have it sitting on. Also, mine came with a air assist. So it's just this almost like an aquarium pump that shoots air through a tube and into where the laser head is, where the laser is shooting out. And that helps to keep the soot and materials that you're cutting away clean from your model. Here's an example of the exact same model. One is with and one is without the air assist. Pretty much right away, tell the difference on which is which. In fact, let's take a closer look at the website and what options you have and what all you get with this thing. This is on the Algo Laser website, algolaser.com. Links will be in the description as always. As of right now, end of December 2024, it's on sale for $299. Really good entry level price for a machine like this. You get just the machine for the $299, right? A basic kit is $499. Wow, that gets you the honeycomb platform, some razors, and a rotary. Now, the rotary is going to be for cups, any type of round thing. Let's see, the Pro Kit is $599. That includes all that plus a camera mount. Uh, oh, is that an actual camera that it comes with or just the mount? It is a camera on a mount. Interesting. That's kind of cool. That would actually come in handy when you are working in light burn, for example. You can set up your work preview. This right here, specifically the job preview, so you can see where on the material your product is going to sit. That was one of the big problems that I have with this machine. On my fiber laser, when I hit preview, it will easily show me an example of where the design is going to be laid out on the material. So I can make adjustments and fine tuning either on the fly or make measurements if I want to make a jig. This, not so much. If I hit preview on this machine, it will move the gantry over to show the perimeter of where the design is going to be on the product. And that's it. So you don't really get a lot of fine tuning here. Like on here, you can see it's pretty darn crooked. When I hit burn, I thought it was fairly centered and it was way off. So something like a camera, whether it's my own camera, I don't know if I can use just a webcam that I have or if it requires this special camera. Probably not. I can probably just use my own webcam. In fact, maybe I'll try that and do a follow up video on how well that works. So what it comes down to is, is the Mark II worth it? For an entry level machine, I think yes. And let me tell you why. There's cheaper lasers out there, but you kind of get what you get with that. Even if you get just a machine for 300 bucks, you can add on to it as you need to. You can buy an extension for it to take it from 400 by 400 size to like 400 by 800 size. You got a lot of accessories that can be used with it that you can buy over time as you need them. Or for a little bit less, you can just buy the whole kit up, at, up front or buy the laser and a couple of things. Depending on what you're gonna use it for, this is, I feel like, a good laser to learn on because of its versatility. It can work with light burn. Now, keep in mind, a license for a full light burn suite is like 100 bucks, but that's a one-time purchase and you have it forever. And if you have multiple lasers or plan on getting multiple lasers, light burn is a no-brainer when it comes to controlling your machine. The app, I think, still has some work to do. There's not a lot of control on it, not very much in fine tuning that can be done with the mobile application. At the same time, it's a free app. What can you expect? The interface on the touch screen itself is really, really good. It's very responsive. You do have a lot more control on the machine. You can go into the settings and you can do updates and upgrades and change things around. It gives you alarms and messages. You've got an emergency stop button on the top. All of those things I think is great in the onboard screen. But thinking about what you're gonna use this for I think is most important. It's a diode laser. So you're limited on the materials you can mark on or cut through. You can cut acrylic. So you do have some versatility 
versatility there if you want to make signs or any kind of custom cutout that takes the precision of a laser but is on acrylic wood of course leather you can cut through a lot of leather with this as well and mark on the top of it but just with anything it's practice 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 I do think it's a great option for somebody that's just getting into the industry or just getting into the hobby, whether they want to make things for themselves or their friends and family, or they're adding a machine to a workshop. I think this is a great option because it has a fair price point and a lot of accessories that can be bolted on with it. And it uses industry standards for communications in applications like Lightburn. What would you use this laser for if you had this in your workshop? Leave a comment down below. Now I'm gonna get back to my workshop and do a little bit of a rearranging. See if I can get these lasers up and going in a more permanent solution.